Hi, I'm Candace. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about mixing color and preparing for palette knife painting. One of my students, who's been painting with me for about a year, has become very uh, skilled at using her brush and we wanted to switch it up a little bit and start using a palette knife. So there's a few things that we're going to cover in this video. I'm going to break the video up into two parts. So today is going to be the first part about mixing color. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so I've got my palette set out here with several cold colors. I've got manganese blue. I have a green batch that I had mixed from a while ago and ultramarine blue. I have thalo blue. I have sap green. No, that's thalo green. And I have a sap green. Now I normally don't paint with sap green, but my student had tons of sap green left over, so she wanted to know how to uh, do palette knife so we could use lots of paint. <laughs> and that you will. So these are the cooler colors. The warmer colors, I have I have a, a rose color down, I have alizarin crimson, I have a little cad red, I have yellow ochre, cad medium, and cad yellow light. So let's start with, I'm just going to go to this funky green, it's a sap green, so I'm going to put that down. Now most of my students use a different kind of knife because they're comfortable with that, but this is a mixing knife. It's flatter and uh, has some uh, short, like straight edge at the very bottom of it. Okay, so sap green. So let's see what sap green looks like with yellow ochre. I'm taking a little bit of yellow ochre. using a paper towel to wipe off my paint. Okay, so that's a pretty nice green. It's a little warmer green than most of these other greens that are going to be mixed. But we can use warm and warm and cool greens together. It's really fine. Okay. So you're going to need a lot of paint for this project. So with palette knife you do use a lot of paint. So let's just mix a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to use my ultramarine blue. With yellow ochre. I'm starting with uh, less warm colors for changing this to a warmer green. So still in the uh, yellow ochre stage with my ultramarine blue. Get a little bit more of the yellow ochre. Alright, so there's a slight change in that blue, but not a whole lot. So chances are we're going to have to add some warmer colors to that. So I can go from the cooler yellows to the warmer yellows. And I'm putting my yellow down first. I need some more. So you can see that this color is almost the same color as sap green. Almost. It's almost sap green. So that's why they say just have a minimal, um, um, a basic palette when you're painting because you can pretty much mix every color you want to simply by using your primary colors. That's pretty nice. So that's really almost the same color, almost. So since that's happening, I'm going to go into my yellow light 
can pump up the volume. So I'm still only mixing with my ultramarine blue, but now I'm going into my yellow. So now, since I've made this pile a little bit lighter than the, my darker ultramarine blue, I want to see what will happen if I add uh, the warmer yellow to chromium green. Okay, so it's, it's getting pretty bright, right? It is. So that's kind of a nice thing. I'm liking that. So you can use whatever greens you want to. I just happen to pick these colors for now. Uh, and I want to get some more of that uh, sap green out. I said chromium green, but I meant sap. So sap green. I happen to have a lot of this too. Uh, so for this demonstration it's going to work out fine so I know I'm going to need a little bit more paint so I'm going to have that more that color added to it I'm going to take a little bit more of my yellow orange it's cad yellow deep really cad yellow medium so I still need um, more of a difference between these two colors so I'm going to go into my cad yellow medium and put a little bit more of warmth in that color and that's pretty nice so see what happens if I bump up the volume so you notice I'm transitioning from uh, darker to lighter it's actually and from cooler to warmer so since I want more warmth than that than this, I want to definitely see that there's a, a huge difference. And there is right now. I see that huge difference. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with my ultramarine. And I've already added uh, the cad medium there. And I need a little bit more. So you can see how much paint is being used already. So this is a good one if you want to use your paint up. And if you don't want to use your paint up, just keep in mind that you'll have a nice painting at the end and it'll all be worth it. All right, so I'm going to go put my cad yellow deep and maybe some of my light. And I'm going to take my ultramarine. It'll be less than I've used before and it should be getting a little bit lighter. Well, there's a lot of pigment in that ultramarine. So I still need to go. Normally I'd put the lighter color off to the off to the side of the pile I'm mixing and start with the lighter color first and put the darker color in there. But Knowing that I need a lot of paint, I'm really not going to do that. So I'm just going to go work at it. All right, so there is a big difference between this pile and my second pile. How do I know? I test it to see. I think I still want to go just a little bit lighter. Okay, these colors are basically for the first layer of paint. Because this particular piece is going to have some lighter highlights in there. Okay, so those are really nice greens. So let's see. I think this is thalo blue. And let's see what happens if we put this. Okay, so that is a pretty bright color.
it's really pretty. All right, so. I normally don't paint with these bright greens, but uh, the painting that my student wanted to do uh, was taken from another piece and the colors are very, very bright. All right, I chose to go lighter because I'm looking at all the other colors that I have mixed already and there's not enough difference between all these colors so I am seeing what I can do to help this along. So this knife is really a great mixing knife. All right, that's definitely green, <laughs> definitely. Okay, so from there, we'll just take a little bit more yellow I'm running out of paint already. <laughs> okay, so I'll take a little bit more yellow. And I want to preserve that pile. So I'm taking a little bit less of this thalo blue. And it has given me just some luscious colors, so I still need more paint, piles of paint. And I'm probably going to keep this until tomorrow, so I'm going to have to cover this palette overnight. So you can use saran wrap to cover it. I was using a Stay Wet palette. Uh, but for this demo, I switched it up. I took the um, um, my my surface out of my Stay Wet box, and I just put it on the on the wood so I can have more room to work, and it's just better. All right, so that is really pretty. Okay, so let's see what I think this is Thalo Green. And let's see what that looks like. Ooh, I think let's try it with. Let's try it with the yellow ochre. See what we get. Hmm, that's pretty. See how different all these greens are. This one it has a little bit more blue in it. And of course, if we did phthalo green with yellow, straight up yellow, let's see what we got. So I'm not mixing a whole lot of this color because I just want to see what it looks like. Whoa, that is definitely a potent green. All right, if you can see the difference here, it's bluer than all those. All right, I'm going to combine these two here. Yellow green. I'm going to empty phthalo green up at the top. And I'm going to put this color in it and see what we get. So I think I'm going to make this I want that one to be a little bit bluer. So uh, let's try the manganese. Once in a while I like to switch it up. So this is a very blue color. 
Let's put manganese and ultramarine in here. So my goal is to try to get these upper piles almost the same value, but different temperatures. Okay, you can see that these top piles are indeed all different and almost the same value. All right, so I have to remember I put ultramarine and uh, phthalo green and manganese in here. So let's get a little bit more of that color. And I said ultramarine, didn't I? Okay, so just mixing these greens together. And I know that I also added some of this warmer mix in there. Still making sure these are all different up here. This one's different from that. This one's different from that and different. So we're good. Okay. A little bit of this, just a pitch. Okay, so let's. I know I want to go a little bit lighter in these two piles, maybe that one too. So well, let's start out with uh, this one for here. Now I turn that warm as it got pretty warm. Okay, so now I want to do, I want to make this sec, the third transition to be just a little bit warmer yet. Need some paint again. See how much paint I'm using? All right, so still. This one was thalo blue, so I'm going to have to put a little bit more <clears throat> mix back in here because I'm running out of paint. So you have to remember what paints you've used. So I hope you're trying to mix these along with me because if you weren't, it might be a little boring for you to watch this. <laughs> Trying both of my warms, cad medium, cad yellow medium. So this is pretty dark, so I am really going to have to work hard to get this lighter. Not yet. So the nice thing about palette knife is you don't use any thinner. That's what I really enjoy but you just definitely have to have a paper towel by you. Always working with you. All right, so let's try this yellow again. All right, so I think I'm gonna have to switch this up, meaning this is gonna be my second value. So I'm just gonna take this up with my knife and offload it there. And then I'm going to take this green and put it in the place of that other green that I took. I'll scrape up my palette. Okay, so this one, and the reason why I did that is because I was going to have to work forever to get this green to come up to the value that I wanted. And I thought it might be better for me to just stop and go from there. So I am monitoring all my values.
So this one could be a little bit warmer. So I want these three to be hmm, almost in the same value range. Back to the phthalo green. So I'm going to put orange, cad yellow, and medium, cad yellow medium down, and just take a little bit of my phthalo green. That is so vibrant. Yay. All right, so you know when you paint landscapes, you usually would put um, transparent red oxide, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson in there to dumb down those greens, but for this painting, we're not going to do that. third time I've filled up on paint, huh? I have to stop saying that. You won't want to paint. So, are they different? Yeah, they're all different. This one could be, let's make this one a little bit brighter because I know that I want to adjust the one on my left down here. I have to bring that one up a little bit higher. So I'm really not over mixing my paints. I'm just mixing them enough to have those colors uh, ring through. Okay, this was my ultramarine. Oh, that was ultramarine. This one was that that sap green. All right, so sap green. So I want this to be brighter. I'm going to take a little bit of this sap green. All right, so that came up brighter, didn't it? It's close. to get this one brighter yet. I'm going to have a lot of paint in there. So let's do more yellow. All right, so let's do the most obvious, and that would be ultramarine blue. I haven't used cobalt. You could if you wanted to. No, I don't have any problem with that. So I need to save some room here because I want to do my manganese. Manganese is such a pretty color. Yum. Okay, that'll be my manganese run. This is my ultramarine blue run. Now I'm going to have more than enough paint to do this little painting demonstration in the next video. And we're not quite ready for that. So this is just basic primary color with cad yellow. So this would be a really pretty green to use for foliage in a painting. That's so nice. Look at that nice dark green. Yum.
So I used ultramarine with coal, um, yellow ochre for this one. So this one is ultramarine and yellow. Cad yellow. All right, so is it different? Yeah, it's different. Okay, nice green. It's very pretty. Now let's start with uh, Cad Yellow and Ultramarine. yellow medium so the trick is is to keep your paint on the knife when you're mixing and not on your hands some people when they when they end up mixing um, they end up with paint all over their fingers now I think what helps me is I work left to right because I'm right-handed so if you're left-handed you would work the opposite so that definitely has helped. So see how warm this green is compared to these other greens? It's almost similar to that one, but not quite. So if it's too similar, someone has a puppy I can hear. <laughs> it's like whining a little. Poor little guy. All right, that's pretty warm, huh? I still might have to put more of that CAD medium down. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, CAD medium. CAD medium yellow. So let's go for yellow with ultramarine blue. Video is also good if you want to just learn how to mix greens. So you can see the difference when you just have yellow and blue, how green it is compared to if you put cad yellow in there, cad yellow deep. That's just, that's cad yellow deep only. And look at the difference in these colors. Very, very pretty. All right, so let's get into our last one, the manganese blue. I need some more manganese. Yeah, manganese is a very po powerful color as well. So let's try with this first. So it's a bluer green. Very pretty. I need a little bit more. Okay, so I think what I want to do, see this, this green is a little bit brighter than all these up here, so 
I am going to put some more ultramarine in this just to see if I can get the, val the value down a little bit but still have that blue in there. All right, so now I put too much in there. I would like to have a little bit more manganese. Not manganese, that's cerulean. Manganese. Let's take some manganese. Oopsie. Manganese. This knife just is good for scooping up paint, too. I know a few of you have this knife, uh, and some don't. It really doesn't matter, but it's just a little bit more useful when you want to mix a lot of paint. Okay, so I'm still keeping my blue tone in there. I do want it to ring blue. Put some more blue in. Don't be afraid of it. All right, so the deal with using these knives is to keep them clean. Um, the reason is, is that you can contaminate your paint real easily. Since this is one color family that's pretty much the same, um, it really doesn't matter that much. But I still like to keep the the color separated here. So you can see that this beautiful um, manganese blue does magically work to turn more blue when you use more of this paint. So manganese blue. Alright, so when you're mixing you have to decide. Do you want your paint to lean more towards the uh, blue side or the green side. Now granted this is really definitely coming up blue, I mean green. <laughs> so I know I like this. Alright, so that turned it a little bit more blue. Okay, so now I have one more slot for the lighter color and this is gonna be a very light bright color, I can tell that already. All right, so I am going to go to my yellow. That's the last light I'm going to do on this green. And this should be a very vibrant color. Whoa, that's gorgeous. Look at that. All right, so let's just make a little bit more of a pile here. So yes, I want you to have a lot of paint down. So we'll start with this first video to get you going. See how I'm turning this back down a little bit because I still need to get a little bit brighter color for uh, the next phase. So the next phase is going to have a lighter line of color here. So I'm pausing because I'm I'm deciding if I want to actually do that today to make this a lighter color. Now I think this is going to be good for the first layer. So this is a great color mixing video of blues and greens and CAD yellow medium with yellow. I did not make any neutralized colors. If I were to do that, I would have used my magenta or rose uh, or alizarin crimson or my transparent red oxide or burnt sienna, but I didn't do that. I wanted to keep the, the painting pretty bright and vivid, and that is definitely going to happen. 
So when you come back for the second half, I would like you to have on hand Gamblin solvent-free gel. It's a clear gel and you mix it into your paint piles 25% to 1. Okay, well you don't need that today, but you will when you start doing your palette knife. So you have a couple days to get yourself your colors mixed and to get your solvent in stock. It's like $15 on Amazon or you can go to a paint store, local paint store and pick it up for might be a little bit more. But anyway, and then I would like you to have your other palette knife is fine to use. The Creative Edge one. The normal mixing palette is around here somewhere. Well, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, this is the other one. It's a flat mixing one. And of course, you can uh, pick up some other palettes if you happen to have them. This is the other one, the one that you're normally using for mixing. Right? And I can show the other palettes to you later. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I think it's uh, got enough to get you going. Okay, all right. See you later. Bye-bye.